everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to So Custom. Today's video is going to be the making of a, this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. So starting with the fabric, I am using this beautiful linen viscose mix fabric I got from Guthrie & Ghani. Really, really nice to work with. I did love this, I have to say. And on to the cutting out. So this is my front piece. I have drafted this pattern from my dartless coat block. I've just made it hip length and given myself a four centimeter hem allowance at the bottom. I've extended the shoulder and then just curved in the underarm. I don't have any darts or anything in this pattern. It is super simple and straightforward. So I just have a couple of notches just to show me later on where the hem is and where I need to press. So that's the front piece done. And on to the back. And for both the front and back, I have uh, my fabric, two layers of fabric underneath. This one, the back, is cut on the fold. And just a notch at the centre back, just so that I know where to place the band later on. And then on to the sleeve. And then again, to help me out, I have a couple of notches in the centre of the sleeve there. That will help me when I come to place it at the shoulder later. And onto the band that I mentioned. So here I have four layers of fabric under my pattern piece. I decided I wanted to add a band because I was inspired by um, some pictures I had seen in a magazine. So I've tried to emulate really that pattern piece. And the same thing for the neck. So um, I have four layers of fabric underneath and that piece is cut on the fold. And now all I've done here is ran the edges that I can run through the overlocker at this stage, which are the shoulder seams and the side seams. I'm just sewing up those shoulder seams now, so I'm back stitching at the start, trying to stick to my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way across. Back stitching at the end. And that's how that looks love that and of course I do it on the other side and here I have just pressed open that seam just to give a nice finish inside and to make sure everything lies nice and flat and now I'm just lining up that notch I mentioned earlier with the shoulder seam pinning along the sleeve before taking to the machine and stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance so back stitching at the start Again, just stitching as accurately as I can the whole way along that seam. Back stitching at the end. And that's how that looks. But I just want to tidy up that edge. So I've ran that through the overlocker and pressed that edge towards the hem of the sleeve. Because later on I'm going to fold this sleeve in half to the inside to give me a nice big cuff and I'll fold the fabric over that edge. So pressing it towards the sleeve edge will keep the inside nice and tidy. And now just to sew up the side seams. So starting at the hem of the sleeve, back stitching, making sure the sleeve seam lines up really nicely, taking it nice and slowly around the curve of the underarm, sticking to my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way along little pivot at the end there at the hem, back stitching and that's my side seam done and again I do the same on the other side. So as I mentioned I have pressed up that sleeve and you can see there that it covers that entire seam so it keeps it just nice and neat and tidy inside. I've pressed opened my side seams and pressed up my hem at my four centimeter seam allowance. And now to add the band. So I've interfaced one side of the band and the other side that you see at the top of the screen there is my facing. So I just need to join the front and back at the shoulder seam on all of those pieces. So back stitching at the start, back stitching at the end at my one centimeter seam allowance. And I only show one here, but of course you can see I've done it on all. And now just to join those up, 
initially at the shoulder seam I want to make sure these line up really nicely so I'm trying to be super accurate along that seam and then I've taken my time to pin the whole way around there's curves around this band and I want to make sure everything lines up super nicely and now to stitch I'm starting at the center of the neck back stitching taking it super slowly around the curves making sure I'm at my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way down pivoting about one centimeter before the edge of that fabric at the bottom back stitching and that's my band and from the inside super neat everything lines up really nicely and now I want to turn this in the right way round so I've taken some of the fabric out of those curves just to make sure that it sits really nice and flat. I've given the whole thing a nice press and now I've just pinned that on to the front of the kimono. And I've taken my time in pinning using quite a lot of pins because there's a few opposing curves here and it is tricky to try and get this on without having any puckers. So as I say, I've taken my time and really really pinned this piece so at my one centimeter seam allowance back stitching at the start and the end and that's how that looks and again I just want to finish off that raw edge and make sure the insides nice and neat so I've ran that through my overlocker and then I just want to top stitch along the edge of the seam that you can see here, just a couple of millimeters away from it. And what that will do is hold in those stitches in underneath of the overlocker and just make the whole thing lie nice and flat. Plus these stitches on the outside will give an extra little bit of interest. So I really like this finish. So as I say, I'm trying to keep as accurate as possible the whole way down, just a couple of millimeters away from that seam so you can see how that looks here and around the curve of the neck it's just a really nice neat and tidy finish which I like and now on to the hemming so I'm back stitching at the start I'm feeling there the overlock stitches in underneath and I'm trying to stitch directly on top of them the whole way along Back stitching at the end and that's how that looks and you see here that that's picked those overlock stitches nicely and the same thing on the sleeve so I have my needle a couple of millimeters away from the sleeve seam trying to stick to that measurement the whole way around back stitching at the start and the end and that's how that looks super neat and tidy and then just to give myself an extra little bit of work I've decided I wanted to add some pockets so I've just cut myself a few rectangles of fabric I've pressed in the edges and finished off those edges on the overlocker and now for the assembly so this is my pocket flap. I'm just going to stitch a couple of millimeters away from the edge of the pocket flap, just to give a nice finish and to hold up that seam in underneath. And that's that done, nice and neat. And then to attach that to the pocket itself, I'm popping it on right side to wrong side of the pocket. I'm stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance back stitching at the start and the end and then I'm just going to finish that seam on the overlocker press it towards the pocket and then fold that flap down and then run a line of top stitching across the top just to hold everything nicely in place and give a nice neat finish so I'm just a few millimeters away from the edge here again back stitching at the start and the end and that's my pockets done just to add them to the kimono later on and then again a little bit more extra work I've decided I wanted to add a belt to this so 
I've cut myself a rectangle of fabric. I folded in those edges you can see here, pressed and then folded the whole thing in half just so that all of those edges are enclosed. And I'm going to stitch along the edge of that piece of fabric and this will give me a couple of belt loops. So just in the same way as I have been just edge, sti edge stitching, <laughs> back stitching at the start and the end. And that's that done. And then I'm just going to fold that in half and cut it and that's going to be my two belt loops that I'll place on my side seams. And for the belt itself I've just cut myself a long rectangle of fabric, folded it lengthways, stitched, turned it in the right way and give it a good press. And now just to pop on the pockets so for me these are the perfect position so they're a couple of inches in from the band and one centimeter up from the hem at the bottom. Super comfy for me. And then while I'm here and pinning I'm just going to pop on my belt loops. So I've just lined up the bottom of the belt loop with the top of the pocket pin through the side seam, making sure the side seam is nice and flat. And now just to attach those. So for the pocket, I'm just edge stitching at the top of the pocket you see here and I'm just running my stitches back and forth a couple of times as there'll be a little bit of stress around that area and I want to make sure everything's nice and strong. So just edge stitching the whole way around, pivoting at my corners. And I'm just two or three millimeters away from the edge. And again here, so this is the top of the pocket and I'm just running those stitches back and forth a couple of times, making sure that seam is super strong. And that's my pocket on. Really nice and neat and tidy, love it. And then just to finish the belt loops. So I'm using a zigzag stitch. I've placed my needle right on the edge of the belt loop and I'm just running a few stitches back and forth, back and forth. And that's how that looks. Again, super neat and tidy. And here is the finished little jacket. And I absolutely love this. So just showing the pockets here and the flap, the belt loops, the front band, and the belt itself, and the sleeve, super neat and tidy inside and out. Love it. And this is how it looks on. So I really, really love how this has turned out. It's super simple to make. There's just a few little complicated bits where I needed to take my time, but I have worn this all week long. Absolutely love it. Love all of the details. Love how comfortable it is. This fabric is just gorgeous. Love it. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you on Friday with my next one. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye folks.